Hello and welcome. Welcome, everybody. We are going live everywhere and this audio is going to be up on the podcast. And so today's topic is good. It's juicy. And this is directed towards the spiritual women, the women who are in self-development. You've been doing so much work on yourself. And there is a lie that you have been buying into that we've been tricked, honestly, into believing or that the patriarchal conditioning will really have us living out that is keeping you stuck. It's keeping you disconnected from your power. And for those of you who are in relationships, this is going to resonate really deeply. Um, so I'm really, really excited to be here today because I think that this topic is a really, really important topic because I um, see so many women struggling with this. And honestly, it was something that I found myself getting like stuck in as well, right? So if you're a spiritual woman, you're an entrepreneur, you're into self-development and you're in a relationship or you're dating, chances are you have found yourself stuck in this spinning for far too long. And once I start talking about it, you're going to notice it and you're going to notice how it's impacting other areas of your life. Are you ready? The lie that is like woven in to the patriarchy that those of us who get into self-development end up buying into when it comes to relationships is that you and you alone doing your inner work will fix the relationship, right? You and you alone doing your inner work will fix the relationship. And it's so sneaky. So for those of us who are, are spiritual, we're into self-development, you've gotten into the habit, and it's, I think, a very great and healthy and helpful habit to, when things aren't going how you want in your life, you look at, what am I doing to cause this, right? What in me is attracting this? What um, belief system or wounding or, or unconscious programming is creating this in my life, right? And so in relationships or dating, what I see so many women doing is dynamics aren't going how you want. You don't feel seen. You don't feel appreciated. You don't feel like treated like the fucking goddess that you are. And so you do what you have been taught to do and, and has worked in other ways and you go to your journal and you process and you're like, this just must be my own insecurity. This must be my wounding. And so for those of us who have really developed such an intense and expansive compassion and ability to hold, oftentimes what I see for powerful spiritual women is that you allow your compassion for the other person, you see their wounding, you see their trauma, you understand that like, maybe they don't have the emotional resources that you do. And you allow the compassion to override your boundaries. You allow your compassion to override what you truly know to be true for you. You allow your compassion to override your standards, right? And we do it in the name of be obviously being compassionate and doing the inner work. But in our patriarchal culture and society, we've already been conditioned to believe that everybody else's emotions are our responsibility, right? So if you have people pleaser, good little girl tendencies, you it's really easy to fall into this trap in your relationship. And that doesn't necessarily mean that you need to leave the relationship but what has to happen is this like maturation emotionally and this stepping into your power where you learn to override this tendency to do all the inner work yourself, thinking that that will change the dynamic. And you really stand for what you want and not allowing your compassion to override your boundaries. And it feels so fucking uncomfortable. But I have a feeling that what you're noticing is because you're over-functioning in your relationship or relationships in general, 
you are not thriving in your business, in your career with money, in your full expression. Because there's not enough room for you to be thriving in your full expression and simultaneously over-functioning in all of your most of specifically romantic relationships. And I say this from personal experience, right? And so when we find ourselves over-functioning in relationships, and it doesn't have to be romantic. I've done it in friendships. I've done it in familial relationships, right? Again, we're taught as little girls, that other people's reactions to us are our responsibility and our fault. The patriarchy ingrains us to believe that if we're just enough, if we're just good enough, then that man who is disrespectful will finally be respectful, right? We grew up in the 90s and early 2000s when all of the rom-coms were like, if I just change fundamentally who I am as a woman, then this man who is like, broken and traumatized and like brooding will he will see me and be inspired to show up and unfortunately a lot of polarity content really supports this narrative right just your feminine energy will inspire the masculine out of him yes and no no in the sense that if he is not already deeply connected to his masculine energy if he has not done his own inner work or if they have not done their own inner work they cannot show up period they can't and sometimes we can use this as an avoidance technique to like avoid our own power if we focus on other people's potential then we can avoid our own power and again it's like it's not you i really 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 want to reiterate this for you it is not you. You are not the problem. You are not at fault, right? Where we get to take personal responsibility is if a dynamic in a friendship, in a relationship, in a romantic relationship is not going how we want, and we have addressed it, brought it up, said what we need to change, and it didn't change, we then have to take like personal responsibility and, and leave, right. Or, and change the boundary and create space and do what we need to do for ourselves. But again, the lie that we end up just unconsciously buying into is that like, and, and like I said, polarity content supports it. Like if I'm just feminine enough, I will inspire him into his masculine and they will, he will finally treat me like the goddess that I am. So you stay in this never ending loop of healing, of processing, of looking at your childhood wounding when the truth of the matter is you either need to set a boundary or exit or, re or rearrange how you're showing up in the dynamic, right? And again, not to like take on the responsibility, like I need to show up differently, but it's like, <clears throat> where are you over-functioning? And how can you take a step back from that? And again, I say all of this because I just see this again and again and again with so many powerful spiritual women because we're so used to doing the inner work, right? We have the emotional tools and capacity. And again, the patriarchy would have you, have you believe that if you were just quote unquote enough, which is so elusive, then the relationship would work. If you're just so and so, if you're just, enough in whatever way, then it will work for you. And that's not true. It's not true. You need two people who are actively doing inner work to create the dynamic that you desire. So if this is resonating with you, there's a few things. One, Give yourself so much fucking love and compassion, so much, because again, you're just doing the, you're just living out the conditioning that you were given, right? You're just living out what so much of society and even a lot of self-development and polarity content teaches you. Two, if you can get to the Mary Magdalene Luxury Retreat in France, because we are talking all about sovereign power and sacred partnership, but really the sacred partnership within yourself, the, that marriage of the masculine and feminine within so that you can create the relationship that you desire. Because the inner work for you to do is not finally, quote unquote, healing enough so that 
this person will like override all of their pain and trauma without actually addressing it, but so that you can stand in your sovereign power. So you have until tomorrow night at midnight to join us and stay at the hotel with us. Or of course you can get your own um, lodgings. That's one of the options. So you go to the magneticwoman.com backslash luxury dash retreat. And if that's not really like doing it for you right now, I have 20 spots open to join me in the Red Temple, which is a year long membership meets mystery school where you'll be surrounded by other women who are wanting to create epic lives, be magnetic, be deeply grounded spiritually. It is this beautiful mix of the sexy and sensual and the spiritual and the sacred. And you can go to magneticwoman.com backslash temple dash sale and join us for an entire year at basically 70% off because the price has gone up. Um, so there's only 20 spots available for this like sale price. So you want to get in again, all the links are in my bio below all the places. But again, what I see all of the time, <laughs> all of the time, all of my clients have gone through this. Friends have gone through this. I have gone through this is that we have allowed ourselves to believe that if I just do quote unquote enough inner work, I, a dynamic will shift in the relationship, even if the other person is not doing their inner work. Right. And when it comes to romantic relationships, especially cis het relationships, if you have learned any polarity work along the way. Unfortunately, a lot of it is patriarchal, misogynistic, and supports that idea. The entire narrative of if you are in your feminine enough, you will inspire a man into his masculine is a lie. It's a lie. And it keeps you caught in a cycle of never ending healing, working, processing versus truly standing in your power. So I also have one spot open for private mentorship right now, either three month or six month container. You can just private message me that. Um, and I work extensively with women on reclaiming your power through pleasure. So whether that be you're over-functioning in relationships, you're in a relationship that is not working for you and you need to decide what to do with it, what to do about it. You need to really step into your power and into your sovereignty. And you want to do it in a way that's like pleasurable and you awaken your sensuality and your erotic. You want to join me for a private mentorship. So I rarely open up spots for a private mentorship. I don't do it very often. Um, so if you want this, it's again, a three or six month uh, container and just private message me for that one. But what I would love for you to do after you watch this, aside from signing up for the retreat, because duh, but is to really take stock of where is this belief that if I just heal enough, things will change, right? And, and again, specifically in dynamics with other people or in romantic dynamics and partnerships, because everything we know about self-development, personal development, spirituality work, it's like, yes, of course, if something's not working, like we're responsible for our own emotions and like emotionally regulating. But if you find yourself needing to emotionally regulate like more than just being emotionally regulated, if you find yourself needing to emotionally regulate more than being focused on pleasure and your desires and like enjoying life, then something needs to change. And it's not you doing deeper healing work. It's not you being finally being enough. And that might be a hard swill pill to swallow. And I get it. And you get to be wherever you are and take as ever, however long you need or make whatever choices you need to make about dynamics and relationships or situationships that you're in, right? Having so much love and compassion for ourselves. But what I really want to just invite you into is the truth and the reality that there is no quote healed enough that will change a relationship dynamic if the other person is not doing their own inner work. And I mean, like actively, like regularly like so many of us have these like morning routines and like we journal and we meditate and we la 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 
And then I see, and I will say this, there is a gap right now. There's a massive gap. Women have been doing personal development for decades, right? Because we've had to. We've had to, as women inside of the patriarchy, to really start addressing these things. Not to mention those of us who consider ourselves to be like the ones breaking the ancestral codes and like wounds of our lineage, right? We've been doing this work for a long time. And a lot of the, especially again, in cishet relationships, a lot of the men who are of our age, our generation, who we're interacting with, dating with, in relationships with, married to, grew up with the story that the patriarchy was just going to patriarch for them. Like they'd be good. They're a man. They're good. Like they don't have to do this stuff. Like all they have to do is quote unquote provide. And this is like the first generation of men or we're in a t- in the first time period in a very long time. And I did a TikTok about this and it like blew up where, and this is what I said, the patriarchy is not patriarching for them anymore. Like, and we're noticing this with a lot of the celebrity couple divorces and just in general. And so there's a gap happening where women who have done a lot of inner work, a lot of healing, who are driven, who are making, you know, their own money and have the freedom and independence that generations before us have fought for us to have are really taking a stand and demanding more in relationships and not all, but a vast majority of men are behind on doing that inner work. And it's beautiful to see more and more like men's groups and men's coaches and things like that popping up and really encouraging that. But there is a massive gap right now, in my opinion, when it comes to what when it comes to the vision of, of modern relationships and having the emotional capacity and tools to truly be in that type of relationship. I've always said that the feminine leads and what is happening right now is the feminine is leading into a different relationship dynamic. And right now we're in this like in world between worlds and uncomfortable in between space where the men or a majority of men, a lot of men, men that you're interacting with, men that you might be with, are not yet stepped into that new paradigm, right? And so what is happening is in that in-between, so many incredible, powerful, potent women are turning inward because this is what the patriarchy told us to do. If something is wrong, it's our fault as women. So we internalize and we internally impale ourselves and internally flog ourselves. It must be me. It must be my wounding. It must be my um, own unconscious, blah, blah, blah. Let me, and let me spend hours trying to emotionally regulate for the fact that I'm carrying all of the emotional burden, all of the domestic burden, all of the child burden, like whatever it is. And what I want to invite you into is what would it look like if you just stopped trying to be the one to fix everything in the dynamic? That might bring up some fear. It might feel really uncomfortable. And that's okay. That's where the retreat, the Red Temple, or working with me privately comes in. Because in order for you to live the life that you want, we have to drop the over-functioning emotionally. And again, it's deeply ingrained. Like, yes, you can like point to your childhood when like you were parentified early on or your mom left you, blah, blah, blah. Like whatever, you can point to your childhood. But the truth of the matter is this goes back 3,500 years. This patriarchal conditioning, these roots are deep. And so in order to really pull this shit up by the roots, it's, It is like a whole system overhaul. It's mental, emotional, energetic, and embodiment. And that's why the retreat is so key and critical being in person, because we get to do all of that work in a condensed time period, which just quantum leaps you like nobody's business. 
And again, if you can't attend the retreat, being together for a year will most certainly help reorient you. And of course, we can work privately and just do this in such a beautiful way. All right, my loves, I hope you have a wonderful day. I'll see you soon.